Would you turn with me to 1 Samuel 17? And we'll look at verses 38 to 40. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 38 to 40. And while you are looking for that scripture, I just want to uh, just say that today is World Lupus Day, May 10th, 2016. And we want to keep those who are facing lupus in our prayers. Uh, this day increases awareness of the more than 5 million people who are dealing with lupus. And so we wear purple on this day, so I wanted to honor those by wearing a little purple today. So let us keep those who are facing lupus in our prayers. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 38 to 40, these are the words that are recorded. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. All right. I want to talk to us on this evening about God's dressing room. God's dressing room. For your youth revival, I see that your theme is young people meeting the challenges of this age. And it is indeed true that young people face a lot of challenges in this age. When thinking about dressing rooms, I'm pretty sure that whether you're male, female, young or old, you've been in a dressing room before. Some retailers, some stores call them fitting rooms. But regardless, we've been in a dressing room before. If you've ever shopped for clothes, you've probably gone into a dressing room to be sure that something fit. Well, these days, when we think about dressing rooms, one of the things that we are very aware of is that in today's world, People are always talking about what we wear, dressing, getting dressed, but not only that, uh, body image and body type. As we consider one of the things that young people face, one of the challenges of this age, they face issues with body image. And it's, I mean, it's no surprise because when we look around, young people see magazines. And on the cover of those magazines, the people there, they, their bodies look so perfect. We're so concerned with body image that we even write about body image. I was reading something the other day where it talked about uh, dressing for your body type. If you have a rectangle uh, shape, then you ought to wear this and you ought not wear this. If you have a circle type body, then you should wear this and not that. If you are a hourglass shaped ladies, there are certain things you should wear and maybe some things you should not. So it's no wonder that our young people are facing body image when every time they look around, the world is talking about body image. Body image, young people, is how you view your physical self. It's when you ask yourself, am I attractive? Or when you wonder, do other people like the way that I look? Body image can be closely linked to self-esteem. However you look at your body sometimes will determine whether or not you have a high self-esteem or a low self-esteem, whether or not you even love yourself. And it will determine your self-worth sometimes. 
So body image is one of those things. So dressing rooms matter more than we think. What happens in that dressing room really matters, whether we're really young or old. But when thinking about young people, I read a survey from the Centers of Disease Control. This survey was taken in 2004. It says that adolescents ages 9 to 12, that means that they are approximately about age 14 to 18, 59% of young females and 29% of males were trying to lose weight because of their issues with body image. Well. Not only that, but, but over 18% of girls and 8% of boys had gone without food for 24 hours because they were anxious about their body image. So this is something that really does concern young people. And in 1998, there was a research study that was really interesting because, and it's found on the About Face website. This research study revealed that there were college students, female college students, who were alone in a dressing room. They were asked to evaluate either a swimsuit or a sweater. So while they waited for 10 minutes wearing whichever garment they chose to put on, they completed a math test. Well, those young women, college women, who were in the swimsuit, they performed worse on math problems than those who were wearing sweaters. So what does this mean? This means that thinking about body, your body image, and comparing it to cultural ideals can disrupt your mental capacity. So sometimes young people are not even to, able to concentrate in school because of this issue of body image. This is why we have to be advocates for our African American young people. Because many times, if they present as upset, some people label them as having a bad attitude. Where it may be something different or something deeper that they're dealing with. Perhaps they're dealing with low self-esteem. Perhaps they need somebody to listen to what they are dealing with. So then, young people, on tonight, since I know that many of us go into dressing rooms all the time in this world, I want us to enter into God's dressing room. All right, all right. Let's see what we might discover if we enter into God's dressing room. Because what's happening in this text is that David is getting ready as a boy to fight this giant called Goliath. Maybe you've heard the story in the Bible about David and Goliath. See, many people are familiar with that story, and we know that in the end, David was victorious. But what about what David did before he went to war with Goliath? You know what David did? David got dressed. He got dressed. David was, maybe we can say, in God's dressing room. What happens is in God's dressing room, what we realize is Saul is here and he's the king and he tried to put his clothes on David. Mm -hmm. Saul's clothes didn't work though for who David was and David recognized that those clothes were not for him. And so when we're in God's dressing room, what we can learn is the importance of recognizing that when it comes down to God, God has created a custom fit for each and every one of us. That means, young people, that you recognize that you are unique. That means that the things that everybody's trying to put on you, you don't have to accept. You have so many people, so many places trying to put things on you all the time. School is trying to put something on you. Home is trying to put something on you. Society is trying to put something on you. Your friends are trying to put something on you. And when you have to deal with all those different things, sometimes it can be challenging to figure out 
What, what am I supposed to put on and keep on? And, and, and what am I not? But when we're in God's dressing room, we have to realize that, you know what? I'm unique. And God gave me a mind of my own. So I can think for myself. So David is there and Saul is trying to clothe him in his clothes. But David recognizes that, you know what? Mm, I, I don't know about this. But Saul is trying to put that on him. So when we're in God's dressing room, the first thing that we need to do is recognize that God's fit for us is tailor-made. God has created plans for your life just for you. There are things that you are going to do that your neighbor, the person beside you, is not going to do because God did not call them to do it. God wants you to do it. So each and every one of you, maybe you can't play the drums. Maybe it's not meant for you to be on the choir. Maybe you're not an usher. But there's something that God has made just for you. And so you have to recognize that in God's fitting room, you can figure that out because you are unique. And then David, he's walking around and he realizes, you know, he tries it. You know, he tries what Saul puts on him. <laughs> he tries it. But then the text says that David took Saul's garment off. And the fact is, in order to be successful, young people, there's going to be some things that you're going to have to take off. All right, all right, all right. There's going to be some things that you're going to have to take off. Now, there's going to be things that you shouldn't put on in the first place. But the fact is, in this life, sometimes we put on some things before we realize that we should not have put it on in the first place. So David put these things on, and then he took it off because he realized that it was the wrong fit. Yeah, yeah. And, and I wish that I could tell you, young people, I wish that I could say, uh, do everything right, stay on the straight path. But you know what? We're all human. Yeah. And there are going to be some mistakes that you're going to make. Yeah. But I want to encourage you to know that even when you make mistakes and you put on some negative things, God can help you take them off. All right, all right. Let me tell you, when, when I was young, when I was a girl, uh, I went to the grocery store with my mom. And in this grocery store, there were these bins and they had candy in them. All right. Oh my goodness, there were malt balls in that, in that uh, container. And ooh, I loved monk balls. So you know what I did? I made a mistake. I stuck my hand in those monk balls and got a few of them and put them in my mouth. My mom turned around and she said, what are you doing? I was helping myself to some monk balls. <laughs> so I was making a mistake. But what I like about God is that even though I made that mistake, because what I was doing was stealing. Even though I made that mistake, God did not turn his back on me. Amen. And sometimes when people make mistakes, one of the last places they do is come to the house of the Lord. One of the last places they come is to the church because they feel like since they made a mistake, they did something wrong, they don't belong in the church. But let me tell you what I learned as I grew older. I was in the grocery store as an adult. And guess what I saw in the produce section? I saw an adult eating some grapes, and they hadn't paid for it yet. And I said to myself, in that moment, I learned my lesson about that mistake of stealing, but wow, there are some adults who still have some things to learn. So rather than judging one another, we are grateful when we can come to the church because the church is not for perfect people. The church is for faithful people. So don't ever turn your back on God or the house of the Lord or make everybody, anybody make you feel like you can't be forgiven and you can't come to church because you made a mistake. Because this is where you need to be when you need to take off the wrong fit. <laughs> and, and in God's dressing room, we, we can see here that David, he's there and he's picking up his staff. So he's taking off the things that Saul was placing on him. And he's, he's picking up the things that he knew were for him in order to be successful. So the text says he picks up a staff. He has five smooth stones. He has a shepherd bag and a sling. 
Now this makes sense because David is a boy who is a shepherd. And so the things that he needed, he already had. So rather than looking over or taking on the things that Saul was trying to place on him, he had what he needed. He didn't try to be more than what he was, and he didn't try to be less than what he was. Now, he eventually grew up. David eventually grew up, and he started to use more advanced type of weapons. But he stuck to what he had for where he was. You see, because again, he was a boy and he was a shepherd. So he didn't try to, let's say, grow up too fast. He knew where he was. You know, the stones were okay for where he was. The staff was okay for where he was. The shepherd's bag, that pouch was okay for where he was. Sometimes young people want to grow up faster than they need to. David is right here, and what he has to do is stay with what God's fit was for him right now. See, God wants to use young people while you're young. He doesn't want you to pretend to be older. You don't have to do that. You're going to get there. God wanted to use David as a shepherd boy. So I want to encourage you, young people. I want to encourage you to step into God's dressing room. Right. Because when you step into God's dressing room, he can change you. You know, it's almost like, have you seen Superman? Wow. And when you see Superman, what does he do? He goes into maybe something like a phone booth. Wow. And he goes in as Clark Kent. But the dressing booth or, or the phone booth all of a sudden becomes his dressing room. And before you know it, he emerges as something greater than a simple man. He emerges with more power. He emerges as even a changed name. And see, that's how God is. When you step into God's dressing room, God is able to change you. And when you decide to follow Jesus, you start to see that the grace of Jesus Christ it looks good on you. Mm -hmm. You start to see that the faith that the Lord gives you, it looks good on you. You start to see that victory, it looks good on you. Because you stepped into God's dressing room and God has changed you. And, and you know, when, 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 when I think about what Jesus went through, you know, I think that death thought that it looked good on Jesus. You see, death thought it looked real good on Jesus. So, so death stayed on Jesus on Friday. And then death thought it looked real good on Jesus. Death thought it was really stylish. And so it stayed on Jesus even on Saturday. But then on Sunday, Jesus got up and he was clothed with all power. So when we look at Jesus, Jesus didn't need an Armani suit. Jesus didn't need to call Versace. Jesus didn't need anything from the Steve Harvey collection. Because he was clothed in all power. And one day, if we follow Jesus Christ, we're going to see his face. You know, the songwriter said something like this. The songwriter says, when it's all over, I will wear a crown. Now, I don't know what size that crown might be, but when I think about all of us who decide to follow Jesus, I believe that the crown is a one size fits all. So when we think about being with Jesus, the songwriter says, when it's all over, I will wear a crown. And then the songwriter goes on to say that they're going to put something on you see, because we realize that we stepped into God's dressing room. And when we step into God's dressing room, we look at our hands and they look different. We look at our feet and they look different. We look in God's mirror and we see a different kind of image. And so the songwriter said that they're going to put something on. The songwriter said, I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. They said, I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. I'm gonna put on my robe, regardless of my body type. I'm gonna put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. I said, I'm gonna put on my robe, tell the story how I made it over. Ooh, I'm gonna put on my robe, tell 
do that as soon as I get home. I said soon 